Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the central dogma of biology, which is how DNA becomes proteins. So we'll discuss replication, transcription, and translation. Replication is how DNA makes copies of itself. Transcription is how DNA encodes mRNA. And finally you have translation, which is how mRNA encodes proteins. It's a three-step process. We'll watch some videos and do some problems together, and by the end of it all, you'll become an expert in how DNA becomes proteins. Let's talk about DNA replication and how DNA copies itself. So if you recall from DNA structure, DNA has a double helix, and it's got four nitrogenous bases, which are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. So A goes with T, and then C will bond with G and it just repeats itself. Remember you have a sugar phosphate backbone and there's a few enzymes that all work together to make sure DNA can copy itself but what the video is pointing out is you have a strand which goes in the five prime to three prime direction and then a lagging strand which is backwards okay which goes three prime to five prime. That's probably not too important. Okay so let's see all the steps here so first things first helicase is an enzyme that comes in and it unzips and unwinds DNA. So it tears it apart. There's something called a replication fork, which is where it starts to separate. So up here you have primase, which is another enzyme, and it's almost like a brick layer. It starts pairing up these nitrogenous bases, these nucleotides, and it just sets in something known as a primer. It's like, this is where we're gonna start replicating. So another enzyme will then come in called DNA polymerase and it starts adding complementary bases. So remember, if there's an A, a T will come in. If there's a C, a G will come in. And it's almost like a brick layer. It starts pairing up these bases and this is how the leading strand copies itself. It goes in the forward direction, so it's quite easy for the, the leading strand to do this. Okay, it just moves in one direction. It's one continuous flow and it just lays down each nucleotide. However, the lagging strand, remember, is upside down. It's also backwards, so it can't do that. So it's built in fragments. It's called Okazaki fragments. And again, you have primase, which lays down the initial bricks, okay, or the nucleotides. And then DNA polymerase will then come in, and it starts pairing up the bases. So again, if there's an A, a T will come in, if there's a C, a G will then come in, so it makes sure there is a match, okay? And it builds it in little fragments, and it goes backwards, okay? It's unlike the, the leading strand, which moves forward, okay? So these are being built in Okazaki fragments from the five prime to three prime direction. And then finally, you have exonuclease, which then tears out the RNA primer, okay? So it's making these final edits here. And now DNA polymerase will then come in and then start pairing up these bases so that everything matches up nice and neat. Okay, and of course you have something called ligase, which also comes in. It's, it's an enzyme that makes final edits, and it just makes sure that the DNA has been copied correctly. So there you have it. You have a double helix structure, and this is known as semi-conservative because there's at least one old strand in the copy. Now we'll talk about DNA transcription and translation. So this is how DNA becomes protein. So this video, again, comes off your genome on YouTube. So source credit goes to them. And what they're trying to show you here is where DNA is located and what it does exactly to get protein. So if you recall, in earlier units, you have DNA which are tightly bound into chromosomes. So you can see this really long strand of DNA wrapping itself around proteins called histones, and it's super coiled, okay? But if you were to like take it all apart, remember DNA has segments on it which contain genes, and genes have the instructions to, to encode protein. So this is the process of transcription. It's almost like replication, except Instead of helicase, you have RNA polymerase, which unzips everything, and it's going to introduce the complementary bases. So you can see how it's tacking on. But instead of creating 
copies of itself, it only makes one strand. Okay, and this strand is known as mRNA, which comes off. Okay, and the only big difference is instead of thymine coming in, it uses uracil instead. So this is our strand of messenger RNA, and it came from the DNA template. So that's that's known as transcription. And the next thing is it kind of has to get itself cleaned up. Okay, it starts making edits and stuff, but now it's ready to go. So the mRNA will then travel out of the nucleus and it's going to head to the ribosome, which is the protein making factory. So now there's a ribosome and it starts reading the messenger RNA, the mRNA. And it tells this guy, this is called tRNA, which is holding an amino acid on the end. And there's always three bases in tRNA. So this is known as transfer RNA. And you can see the, the anticodon, that's what you call it, is UCA. So it will bind to AGU, okay? So it, it reads it almost like three at a time, okay? It's like a ticker tape or like a printer, okay? You, like, you feed it through and it understands the code and you can see how it's like, it's building this polymer of amino acids, okay? Amino acids start forming this chain and then by the end of it all, once it's complete, it starts to fold and then that's your new enzyme or protein that's been created. So in this problem, a template strand of DNA in a gene reads, and it's going from three prime to five prime over there, and you have all these triplets, okay? And so ATG, CCC, TTC, AGA, ACT, we'll get back to that in just a moment, okay? But um, you have your DNA, and it tells you, all right, using the codon chart, what is the sequence of amino acids that is produced after translation? So you're starting with this DNA strand, and if you recall from what I've been discussing so far, DNA becoming DNA is a process known as replication. So that's just DNA copying itself. So this problem doesn't really involve replication at all. Okay, instead, we're gonna skip ahead and we're gonna look at transcription and translation. So from this process, we have DNA. So we have our template strand of DNA and it will encode for mRNA, and this is the process known as transcription. And we just saw the animation on this. And then finally, you have your mRNA strand, which would then go to the ribosome and it's fed through like ticker tape, okay, or like a printer, and this will code for protein. And this process is known as translation. So we're going to look at both transcription and translation to see what kind of protein is created. All right, so the first thing to do is just to copy down that template strand. All those letters there, the, the bases. So you have your ATG. Okay, this is your DNA strand. And it's it's easiest if you just read it in triplets. You'll see what I mean. So ATG, CCC, TTC, AGA, ACT. So adenine, cytosine, thymine. So that's your DNA template. Okay, and your DNA template will provide the code for mRNA. So one small detail is this. So in mRNA, thymine is replaced by uracil during transcription. So every time you see an A, it will code for uracil. Thymine will code for adenine, guanine, will code for cytosine. So that's your codon triplet right there, UAC. And then you get GGG. And we're just doing this in triplets. I think it's easier that way. This will code for AAG. Uracil, once again. Cytosine. Uracil, UCU. 
and the last triplet U G A. So we have our mRNA transcript and this will undergo translation to create a protein chain or a polymer of amino acids. And this is done through translation. You guys saw the animation on this. So it's your mRNA strand. It's being fed through the ribosome and it's gonna start producing these amino acids over here. So this is how you read the codon dictionary. There's a first letter, a second letter, and the third letter. So you read this off in triplets. Okay, and the third letter will be found in like blocks. Okay, you'll see. Um, but it's basically like a like a coordinate system. Okay, you look for the, the first letter, okay, which is in this case it's U. So there it is, there's U. We're gonna start there. The second letter is A. And the third letter is that C that we just circled. So we found it. This will code for tyrosine, and it's abbreviated TYR. So that's our first amino acid in this chain. Next, we have GGG. So let's look for the first letter. There it is. I'm going to circle it in red. G. Second letter, G. So I know it's in the lower right block down there. So let's circle it. And the third letter is also a G. So GGG will code for glycine. But so does GGU and GGC and GGA. You can see in that block. Okay, so it's redundant. There's like four different codes that will code for glycine. Okay, just to point that out. Now, in violet, we're going to look for AAG. So AA, which means it's in that block right there. We'll circle it nice and big. And the third letter is a G. So this will code for lysine, abbreviated LYS. Oops, I meant to use a different color here. Let me go ahead and erase this. Sorry. Let's draw this nice and neat again. So we're going to look for UCU in this codon. Okay, so first letter is a U. Circle that in green. Second letter is a C. So I know it's there somewhere. And then third letter is UCU. So UCU will code for serine, abbreviated S-E-R. And the last codon is U-G-A. And once again, I keep forgetting. I'm going to use a different color so you can see how these 15 bases will code for five different amino acids. So U-G-A, let's look for it. Okay, first letter is U. Circle that in yellow. Second letter, G. Okay, so I know it's in this box somewhere, and the last one is A, so UGA means stop. So that means the amino acid chain has come to a complete stop. And we have these four amino acids, so tyrosine, glycine, lysine, and serine, and finally stop. Okay, so just to summarize, we did a problem where we took a DNA template strand, it underwent transcription, to become mRNA, and finally the mRNA became protein. So in summary, DNA becoming DNA is known as replication, DNA becoming mRNA is known as transcription, and mRNA encoding for proteins as it starts building polymers of amino acids to create one big chain which eventually becomes a protein or an enzyme, that's known as translation. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Wind Biology.